This could be the hardest challenge ever on alone in the wilderness. The contestants have caught enough big fish, so food and drink aren't a concern anymore. Their shelters are top-notch, but they'd endure 10 days of constipation before quitting. Hunger isn't their worry. The real worry is overeating and losing steam before the million-dollar prize. It's day 34 now. Only three contestants remain. Mate brushes her teeth at the shelter's entrance on this rainy morning. Sitting at the door, sipping water, and watching the rain is pretty relaxing, though grilled fish would make it perfect. Every morning, the first thing she does is check the fish net. Mate doesn't really expect to catch anything. She probably keeps her expectations low to avoid disappointment. As soon as she lifts the net, she spots a fish. This small catch brightens Mate's entire day, giving her hope for survival. Mate puts the fish in an iron pot to fry. The aroma of the fish fills the entire shelter, making her mouth water. Meanwhile, Mate consistently catches plenty of fish and checks his net daily, always finding a good haul. Sea otters have appeared nearby, stealing fish from his net. But this fish is big enough for Mate to have a good meal. Today, he only caught three big fish. If one fish can last two days, then three fish can last eight days. The fish are full of roe. The fish roe are a wilderness delicacy and taste amazing when cooked. Fleming checks his net every two days, but he isn't as lucky as Mate. Luck determines how long he can survive here. Fleming's goal is to last 46 days. As a returning contestant, he previously lasted 45 days, so he has some skills. Now, with 12 days left, he must find food to eat during these days. Otherwise, he won't make it to 46 days. He's been sipping pine needle tea for two days now. Doesn't he realize that too much tea can actually make him hungrier? It's now day 35. Maid is acting crazy in his shelter early in the morning. It shows that he's in a very good mental state. After all, he fills up on meat daily. Good food and comfy sleep naturally keep his spirits high. While others have water for breakfast, Maid has a big chunk of meat. The difference is huge. It's been raining for two days straight. Food is now the top priority. Without it, you just starve in your shelter. Mate's shelter is solid, but she's the least nourished of the three. Mate plans to build a fish smoker today, which he started on day 30. He started building it, but hasn't finished yet. As the contestant who catches the most fish, he doesn't smoke them for preservation. It would waste a lot of food. Mate's smoker is basic, held together with wire and heated by a fire below. I just wonder if the wooden frame will burn out before the fish is cooked. Can't wait to see him mess up. Mate is carving her name inside the shelter, clearly bored. Fleming is also killing time in his shelter. Since it's raining, they can't work outside. Everyone's just stuck in their shelters, finding ways to kill time. Only Maid is busy making a smoker. How is Mate so good with a knife? She carved such beautiful letters, I just don't get it. This woman hasn't had meat for days, yet she can still laugh so happily. Fleming's handiwork is also done, and it looks quite refined. Maid hasn't started smoking his fish yet, and now it's raining again. Come on, man, if you don't smoke the fish, what am I supposed to do? Maid goes to the shore to enjoy the view. He notices claw marks on a tree, likely from a large carnivore. It seems risky around here, but wild animals usually leave humans alone and less provoked. As long as you leave them alone, it's pretty safe. It's day 36, and at last, the rain has stopped. Fleming sees the clear morning to check his nets. Despite the hassle, they've been reliably catching fish in the deep water. Despite usually having great success, today Fleming only caught a small fish. Frustrated, he felt like diving in and ending it all. Meanwhile, Maid is finally smoking his fish. Look at those few pounds of fish meat he's holding. He puts the fish heads on the grill's iron mesh. Then he covers them with a rusty iron plate, because only fish smoked on rust gets that special heavy metal flavor. The filthier and more toxic the grilled fish, the tastier it becomes. Put some wood underneath, ignite it, and add small branches to boost the fire. Tossing in fresh pine needles creates a ton of carcinogenic smoke fast. More smoke means tastier smoked fish. Maid keeps tossing fresh branches onto the fire. Vigorous smoking like this is key to making top-notch smoked fish. Three pounds of fresh fish become five pounds after smoking. The extra weight is just smoke residue, but it tastes fantastic. Soon, the grill caught fire. Maid clearly couldn't control the heat, but he stayed calm. He just quietly watched the stove burn. What's going on? Is this a success or a failure? Anyway, the pine needles were gone. Who knew if the fish was charcoal? May didn't know either. When he pulled out the grilled fish, it turned out okay. At least it wasn't wasted, and he had to eat the grilled fish strips. Meanwhile, Mate began smoking fish again, using his shelter's chimney just like last time and it came out great. Will he match that success this time? He was boiling water and grilling fish inside the shelter. There were still two fish hanging from the roof of the shelter. He planned to hang the remaining fish meat in a bag. Now, he ate half a fish and some berries every day. As long as he had fish, he felt secure. Mate didn't have much meat, but planning meals was benefit. Fleming was fishing every other day. He wasn't in top shape, but he wasn't doing too badly either. He looked like he could be the winner. If the show had a set outcome, they'd surely add some dramatic twists.
Fleming went out again to explore, looking for a better fishing spot. Maid went to the west to get a drink of water. He encountered a bad situation, his nose got injured and bled a lot. Despite eating fish daily, he hadn't had a bowel movement in 10 days, likely due to a lack of vegetables causing constipation. Maid went back to the shore to set up his fishing net. He placed the net on the holder, hoping for a good catch. Meanwhile, Fleming, today, he caught just a small fish but still enjoyed it. He wasn't really hungry, just not quite full. All he could think about was catching more fish. His shelter, a wooden cabin, provided occasional fish meals. He had all the qualities of a champion, he even licked the fish bones clean. When he didn't have fish, Fleming would go out to gather other food. For example, tree bark was also part of his diet. He would collect some, boil them in a pot, and still enjoy eating them. But can he really digest that bark? On day 37, mate, bored, made a toy in his shelter. He carved a smooth stick, just the right length, and he really liked it, but he felt it wasn't perfect yet. So, he decided to carve some words on the toy. Soon, a delicate toy with a name was finished. To save on data, we'll skip the details. After filling up, Fleming headed to the shore to sunbathe. He worried that rapid weight loss would jeopardize his survival. After expressing this concern, he laid down and quickly fell asleep. Life was pretty comfortable. Maid was even singing in his shelter, despite not having a bowel movement in 10 days. Late at night, reaching the shore, her fear was confirmed. It was gone. Fleming had just returned with his net. He had a huge catch today, landing nine big fish at once. To have such a haul in the final round, it was an ideal rebound. Fleming intended to cook the fish over a fire. Meanwhile, Mate was struggling, using a stick to scoop water. She found her net, but it was stuck. Despite using all her strength, it wouldn't move. This was her only survival tool. The net snapped. She lost her catch and her net. It felt like bad luck had just walked in uninvited. Back at his shelter, Fleming lit a fire to cook his catch. He aimed for a feast, frying a big pot of fish all at once. It looked like he intended to eat it all in one go. Mate reorganized her net. Although it was only half its original length, she had to make do with it. Even catching one fish would be a good net. On the night of day 39, the wind picked up again. Mate was worried about her net. She went to the shore with a flashlight to retrieve it. Luckily, she caught a fish, which meant she could survive another day. On day 40, all the contestants entered a period of fatigue. Mate's fish supply seemed endless. On day 41, Mate hoped to catch a fish today, and sure enough, she did. This half net worked better than a full net. Just as Mate seemed to be making a comeback, Fleming flaunted his catch. Another hefty fish over 10 pounds. With food and drink sorted, the competition got even tougher. As time passed, the contestants' conditions improved and they started living more comfortably. The final round of the survival competition felt almost like a vacation. On day 43, Fleming cooked all his fish. Every time he had fish, he would eat until he was stuffed. It seems he smokes the fish to preserve it, but he enjoys the feeling of being full every time. There are still three days left until his 46-day goal. No wonder he ate all the fish. Mate pulled out a family photo. She's missing them. Indeed, people can't be too full. It affects their fate. At night, Mate gave himself a foot massage. He hasn't bathed in half a month. I wonder if his feet stink. He suddenly started crying in his shelter. He really misses his family now. Both Maid and Mate are feeling homesick, which is risky. By day 45, the contestants are stuck in a monotonous routine. Who knew that life in the wild could be so monotonous? Maid's longing to return home is intensifying. Meanwhile, Maid works out in his shelter, while Fleming is the only one outside. Maid wants the crew to take her home. After all, announcing his withdrawal is somewhat embarrassing. His goal here was 45 days, and today he has achieved it. He's already prepared to quit in the next two days. Seeing the small wooden sticks in his shelter, I can tell Maid has been quite happy here. You can't judge a book by its cover, it depends on whether she wants to show it. Seeing her toy's name a few days ago, I knew Mate wasn't simple. In her shelter, Mate reflects on her experiences. She spent 10 days building this small cabin. Mate was the fastest to build a wooden shelter among all the contestants, and her shelter is the best. She spent most of her early days building, going hungry for over 10 days. She truly is a construction fanatic. She truly earns the title of construction fanatic. Those small wooden pieces, they double as decorations. A woman surviving solo in the wild is always remarkable, she has some unique qualities. Maid sat there for a while. Now she has enough food, but she's starting to get bored and finds this place dull. She once considered ditching her family to stay here until the show went bust, but now she's nervous and just wants to go home. She lay by the shore and cried. At that moment, I didn't know how to comment. Maybe my guess was right. The winner of surviving alone in the wild is never the one with the easiest path. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fleming is in top shape. He wrote names for the shelter, preferring it over idly sitting around. He constantly finds ways to entertain himself, and it's clear his role-playing. This type of person always appears in such situations. Fleming has a high chance of staying until the end. On the 46th day, he reached his target survival days. He could go home and have a feast with his family by pressing a button. Meanwhile, Maida, who had no intention of going home before the 45th day, suddenly wants to leave since yesterday. All contestants are contemplating quitting. It's a test of mental endurance now, as food is not an issue. Anyone who quits now is essentially handing the championship to someone else. Fleming originally planned to quit on the 46th day. But now he feels he really likes it here and doesn't want to leave. On the other hand, Maida, who had never considered quitting, now wants to go home. On the 47th day, the temperature plummeted. It started snowing on the distant mountains, and all contestants noticed. Maida's hands were frozen while fishing, but he still went into the water every day to set the nets. Soon, it started hailing, but no one quit. On the 48th day, Maida's hat was chewed by mice, leaving a big hole. There were two mice in his shelter. Maida decided to craft a tool to catch the mice. He used a pipe to make a trap where the mice would crawl in for food, but couldn't escape. He set the trap in a spot frequented by the mice, using a bit of fish meat from the iron pot as bait. He hoped to catch all the mice. Last night, Maida dreamed of eating a lot, probably because he was very hungry. He longed for a proper meal. Despite his hunger, Maida appeared healthy. The mouse trap worked quickly. A mouse was eating right under his nose. He watched it go in and quickly covered the bottle. Soon, he successfully caught a mouse. Maida explained how he caught the mouse, noting it was the second type of meat available in the wild. Instead of eating the mouse, he put it on a large ant nest near the shelter. On the 49th day, Maida continued working every day, but very slowly to conserve energy. He still made wooden toys daily. However, he still made wooden toys daily. Meanwhile, Fleming was busy collecting moss and even built a tall fireplace. Rain began again in the middle of the night, and the dropping temperatures made survival tougher for the contestants. Maida was satisfied with his survival journey. These 49 days were enough for him to find closure. What surprises will the contestants bring us next? Stay tuned for the next episode.